Would you like to be somebody who understands the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Then listen to the end of this video where I explain how knowledge is simply the wisdom of somebody else, but it does not resonate with your own experiences and how you actually feel. Whereas wisdom is the result of your own experimentation in life and it applies to your own experiences and resonates with how you feel. And trust me, this concept is extremely important to know in the realm of self-development. And if you want to prevent yourself from living the life of somebody else and dissociating psychologically. So before we get into this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to learn more about self-development, dating, Jungian psychology, and how to reduce suffering in life. Uh, let's get into it. So true wisdom begins when you accept that you really know nothing, or at least very little. But first we need to get to that point. Modern people, or generally there's this, this, this atmosphere of arrogance that we know how the world works, and we know why people behave in certain ways, like staying in their nine to five jobs or whatever. We, we think we understand it. And we, we tend to have this proclivity to hold a tenacious grip on the logic of things and the science behind things, which sort of are the root of our explanations of the world. Yeah, okay, people stay in their nine to five jobs because it's comfortable or because it gives them security. But we lack the personal experience, the experimentation, being able to relate to what we're analyzing, to understand it fully. You can never accurately understand and empathize with someone until you have experienced precisely that which they have experienced. You can understand the logic behind somebody's behavior. Then you have the knowledge. But until you experience their situation yourself, you will never have the wisdom. There is a big gap between understanding the logic or the science behind the way the world works and, ha and, have actually ex and having actually experienced that thing yourself, the emotions of it, it's worlds apart. So the difference between knowledge and wisdom is the following. Knowledge is what you read in a self-help book. It is essentially the lessons from somebody else. It is what you, what you absorb intellectually. It's basically the rational part of your being. It is what you, what you, what you learn through, through, just through the intellect, just through your mind. Wisdom is experiencing something and then reflecting on it and integrating it into your structure of your cognitive structure. It's the unification of knowledge and experience. It's the unification of the rational and the emotional and of the matter, the, the, the physical world and the spirit, the non-physical world of yourself, aspect of yourself. So knowledge is really, it's just like, it's somebody else's wisdom basically. And wisdom is having, building your own wisdom is the result of experiencing yourself. It is doing the things yourself and then reflecting on it and then evaluating how it felt, whether it was, you know, positive, whether it was negative in what aspects, usually it's a mix of both. But that's the difference between knowledge and wisdom. And building wisdom is aligned with your full being. It, it, it engages in your mind and your body, which is super key to, to building, to understanding the world. Whilst knowledge is simply collecting information that is half alive and half dead. It's half alive because, you know, you're thinking in it in your mind, but it's half dead because it's somebody else's. It's, it's, it's the result of somebody else's living and it's not your living, so it's half dead. It's, it's half alive because it was someone else's, but it's, only, but it's still half dead because you haven't lived it yourself. So when you build wisdom, so experiencing and reflecting, it's deeply integrated into your personal cognitive structure. It changes your being. It resonates with your own emotions at a deep, deep level. 
whereas knowledge makes you think things your body does not produce. It's somebody else's thoughts. Like, it's super important to know, like, people think if you have knowledge, you can navigate life successfully because you know, uh, I should stay away from these kinds of people or these kind of behaviors and I should focus more on these. But that's only half of the picture. You're, you're only listening to what your mind thinks is good, but you're not listening to what your body thinks is good. And your body is just as, if not, no, I'm just gonna say just as important as satisfying your mind intellectually. It needs, it's, it's like your body is who you are. It's part of your being and it needs to, it needs certain things. And if you just avoid them because you've heard that they are, these things are suboptimal, then your body is like lagging behind your mind and then you dissociate. And your body will communicate then to you, you know, in, in, with symptoms of like pain or anxiety or something that you're doing something wrong. And there's something like a quote Schopenhauer had, I think he actually quoted like a, a, a Pope. He had said something like, if you're just building knowledge, you are forever reading, but never to be read. So you're just collating knowledge without ever actually producing something new. You're, you're kind of the, the ghost of somebody else. In that sense, you're also half dead, kind of. Yeah, so wisdom is first-hand experience that the world is far more complex than you thought it was, and it gives you evidence that your knowledge you used to hold is oversimplified. And knowledge is, knowledge is kind of rudimentary a rudimentary level of understanding of the world. Wisdom is like a Yoda, <laughs> relating to Star Wars, like a Yoda kind of level. It's aligned with the complexity of reality. It makes you humble, and that's super important. One of the key, uh, the key benefits or advantages or the value you get out of wisdom or experimentation is that it makes you humble because you're basically taking knowledge and applying it to the real world, your world, you're testing it, you're, you're, you're doing, you're undertake, undergoing a trial and error process with the knowledge or your, pers your perspectives, your perceptions of the world. And that makes you humble because it is so complex, the world, you can almost guarantee that after the experience, the experimentation, you'll kind of know that the knowledge you had is in some sense flawed. It is not accurate, and that's very humbling because it 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 encourages you to detach from identifying with perspectives, ideologies, ways of life because you know they are like they're they're wrong. Like you can almost guarantee that they are in some sense wrong, and when you accept that, you always stay on your. On, on, on you, so you stay curious to learn and, and update and improve your maps of reality because you know they're wrong. And that's super important for a life of, of richness, of, of experience, of also intelligence and, well, not IQ, I would say, but wisdom. That's so, so important. And it's humanity, I think, depends on that, actually, if you undertake that experimentation and building wisdom. So in conclusion, the difference between knowledge is that Knowledge is the information that somebody else has sort of concluded about life, but it is not aligned with your body. It might be aligned with you intellectually, but your body has experienced totally different things. It thinks, it thinks different things and you dissociate them. Your mind is over, over here and your body is lagging because you're not engaging your body. You're not experiencing with it. Now, on the other hand, wisdom is a result of experimenting, experiencing, and then reflecting, integrating the experiencing, the, the experience, the lessons into your cognitive structure and letting that guide you then. And that's good because you're deriving knowledge also from your body and your body knows things you cognitively, you, you consciously cannot or not yet understand. Your body is like, it is, it, is, it is connected to your unconscious more than your consciousness is maybe. And your unconscious has a lot to tell you and it actually guides, I think, the majority of your behaviors in life. So if you can listen to your unconscious mind with your body, then yeah, it, you'll build wisdom and you'll understand yourself a lot better, which is super beneficial. And the reason your body is, is, understands a lot because from your unconscious mind is because it is the bridge between 
in some sense. Your mind is also a bridge, but it is the bridge between your unconscious and conscious mind because your unconscious will indicate, it'll communicate how it feels or like give you feedback through the body, through anxiety, depression, pain, but also positive emotions like joy, excitement. Yeah. So if I can give you one message to take away is focus on your own experiences, experimenting, try to be skeptical of the knowledge you're absorbing and try to actually implement it and test it out in real life. So please leave a comment below whether you think there are any other differences between knowledge and wisdom and why wisdom is more valuable than just knowledge. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to learn more about self-development, dating, Jungian psychology, and how to reduce suffering in life. Thank you for listening.